In this lesson we will be looking at one or two step equations. But before we start, let's review some vocabulary. Like terms. These are terms where the variables and their exponents are exactly the same. So let's look at this first example. Do we have any like terms? Well, yes we do because this term and this term both have x's and their exponents are exactly the same, meaning they are both raised to the first power. You can't see that, but it really is there. And so we can combine those like terms and say if I have 2x plus 5x, that's 7x, and then I would just bring down or keep the plus 3y. Are there any like terms here? No, because even though they both have x's, one is raised to the second power and one is raised to the first power. So there are no like terms and you would just leave it like this. The next thing we need to talk about is the coefficient. That is a number that is multiplied to the variable. So in this one, 2 is the coefficient of x, 3 is the coefficient of y. 6 is the coefficient of x squared, negative 3 is the coefficient of x, and then since 1 is what we would call a constant, it is not a coefficient. So one more time, that coefficient is that number that is multiplied to the variable, in other words, a letter. So I just use that word constant. A constant is just a number, meaning a variable varies, a constant stays the same. So a 1, a 2, a negative 5, a 1 half, all of those are just constants. The next thing we need to look at is what's called the addition property of equality. Very important when solving equations. Basically it says if we have two things equal to each other, if we add the same thing to both of them, then they stay equal. It would not change. What do I mean by that? Let's look at this example. I have an equation x minus 4 equals to 1. Well, if I added 4 to this side and I added 4 to this side, the property of equality says they stay equal. Why would I want to do that? Well, what does minus 4 and plus 4 equal to? That's right, 0. We would just have x, and we would say that adds to 0, would equal to 5. Now I know you could have just looked at that equation and told me the answer is 5, but that's the algebra that's involved. And so we could certainly check our solution by saying does 5 minus 4 equal to 1, and yes it does. So on the property e equality, it says we could add the same number to both sides. Well, subtracting the number to both sides is also the same because that's really adding a negative. So if I subtracted 5, or in other words, added a negative 5, that's also following that property of equality. Because one more time, a 5 and a minus 5 are 0, and 9 minus 5 is 4. That would be the answer to this equation. And again, yes, you could just look at it and go, yeah, I know 4 plus 5 is 9. All right? But again, that's what we're checking, 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So that's how we're going to use that addition property of equality to solve these equations. So let's look at this first example. We have some steps. What we want to do is we want to collect like terms on each side of the equal sign. Let's do that. So I'm going to look at this equal sign and on your paper you should keep that equal sign all the way straight down. Don't move it around. Okay, so we're going to collect like terms. Well, 9x and a negative 8x are the same. And what is that equal to? 9x minus 8x. Well, that's 1x. We keep the variable and add or subtract the coefficients. Right. These are also like terms because they are constants. A negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3. We have 15 plus 4 which is 19. 
So I've done step one. I've taken all the like terms on each side of the equal sign. I've not crossed over. Now the second step is where I'm going to use that property of equality, that addition property of equality. I'm going to get the variable on one side of the equal sign, all the constants on the other. Okay, so since my variable x is already on the left hand side, I need to ask myself what could I add or subtract to, to get rid of the plus 3? What undoes adding 3? That's right, subtracting 3. So what I could do is I could subtract 3 on both sides of the equal sign, and I'm going to do it vertically just because it's a little bit easier to write, and so I have x, that's 0, equals to 16. That's my answer. Now could you check your answer? You could, and I, I don't want to discourage that, but most of the time checking answers take longer than actually working out the problem. But this is how you would check it. I'd have to multiply 9 times 16 minus 2 minus 8 times 16 plus 5 and really see does that equal to 15 plus 4. Good stuff, but I think I would rather you spend your time going back and checking your steps to make sure you're working it correctly. Let's look at the second example. So remember our steps. We want to collect like terms on each side of the equal sign. So let's see what our like terms are. We have those are alike there, those are alike there, and then we have our constants that are the same and our constants are the same. So we do not want to cross that equal sign. So I want you to put that there in your paper. So we're going to put these together. That's going to be 12x. 9 plus 3 is 12. Keep the x. Then 3 minus 1 is a positive 2. On the other side, 13x minus 2x is 11x. And 6 minus 4 is positive 2. So notice I did not go across the equal sign. I'm just collecting like terms on each side of the equal sign. Now that second step says I want to put my variables on one side and numbers on the other. That first example I only had x's on the left. Now I have x's on the left and the right. Well since I have 12x on the left I think I want to get them all on the left side. So since I have a positive 11x here, I could subtract 11x because 11x minus 11x is 0. So what's 12x minus 11x? That's right, that's 1x. You could write the 1 if you want to, but we really just usually don't. Okay, that's 0, that's what we want, equals to positive 2. Now I've gotten my x's by myself by itself on one side. On the left, that means I need to move my numbers to the right. Well again, if I have a plus 2, I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. So I have x, that's 0, equals, and what did I just say that equals to? You're right, 0. So we have x is equal to 0. That is a legitimate answer. You could have zero dollars in your bank account. That is an answer. So again, we could check it, and since it is zero, that's probably an easy thing to check. So let's go ahead and do that. So everywhere there is an x, I'm putting in a zero. Now why did I say that's easy? Well, because what is nine times zero? Zero. Three times zero? Zero. So that's two. That's 0, that's 0, and 6 minus 4 is 2, so I got a true statement, so I know that answer is correct. Am I going to make you do that checking? No, because again, most of the time, that takes longer than working the problem. I just want you to look, be careful, go step by step, and at the end of that problem, you should be able to take your pencil and draw a vertical line down your paper through all your equal signs. If you're looking like this, then you're probably not doing good practice. Let's look at the next example. Oh, now we have parentheses. So we want to clear our parentheses by using that distributive property. 
you should have learned previous to this class, meaning I need to distribute the 5 over the 3x minus 4 and distribute the 4 to the 5x minus 2. I'm only distributing it to the parentheses. That 5 is next to that parenthesis. That means multiplication. So I have 5 times 3x, 5 times negative 4, then I'm going to bring down the plus 4x, then I have 20x minus 8 minus 9. Now my problem looks similar to example 2. At this point I want to collect like terms on each side of the equal sign. So I have my x's over here and on the other side I have some constants. All right, so what is 15x plus 4x? That's 19x. I bring down my negative 20 or a minus 20. Then here, that's the only x term I have. But I put those together. Remember, a negative and a negative. You add and keep the sign. Again, at this point, I want to put my x's on one side. Now most teachers say, oh, just put them on your left every time, and that's okay. But this time, since I have 20x on the right and 19x on the left, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. So I'm going to move this 19x by adding its opposite. Okay. Why am I doing that? Because that's now 0. Bring down the negative 20. Be careful you don't lose that sign. 20x minus 19x is... 1x, and then we're going to bring down the negative 17. Now I've gotten 1x. I need to get it by itself, so I need to get rid of this negative 17. So I'm going to add its opposite. And negative 20 and a positive 17. Ah, now we have opposite signs. What's that rule say? Subtract and take the sign of the larger number equals x, and that's 0. So my answer is x is equal to negative 3, meaning if I went back and put it everywhere there was an x and checked that arithmetic, that would be a solution to that equation. Okay, And again, I'm just kind of checking. All right, not quite perfectly vertical, but pretty darn close. Let's look at our final example. Wow, not only do we have parentheses, we also have some brackets. Order of operations say so you got to work inside out. So the first thing I'm going to look, I'm going to take those big brackets and let's work on the inside of that. So I'm going to distribute, distribute, and on this side, since I've only got that set of parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and distribute there. So I'm going to bring down that 2, I'm going to keep that bracket. Then I'm going to have 6x plus 3, and now when I distribute, I'm going to multiply not by 2, but by negative 2. You want to take that sign with it. So that's negative 4x, and a negative times a negative, that would be a plus 6. On the other side, I'm going to distribute that positive 2. So 2 times x, and 2 times 4. Am I ready to collect like terms? Well, kind of. Let's go ahead and clean up inside this bracket before I distribute. Because remember, we're going to work inside out from the innermost parentheses to the outer, which means I can collect like terms inside here. OK, so 6x minus 4x, that's right, that's 2x. 3 plus 6 is a positive 9. On this side, I'm going to go ahead and put those together. Now, at any time I'm going too fast, you can pause the video, rewind, listen to it again. All right, I'm going to keep going. We still have those brackets. Those brackets are just like parentheses, so I'm going to distribute again. So I have 4x plus 18 equals 3x plus 8. Now it doesn't look too bad. Where do I want to put my x's this time? I think I want to put them on the left, so I'm going to add the opposite of that 3x. So I'm going to get 1x plus 18.
that 0 and I have a positive 8. I want to get that x by itself so the opposite of positive 18 is negative 18. So I have x, that's 0, equals, one more time, a plus and a minus, subtract, take the sign of the larger number. So just to review, if you have parentheses or brackets, you want to clear those parentheses or the brackets. Right? You want to collect like terms on each side of the equal sign. And then you want to, what's called, isolate the variable, which means get the x or a or b or whatever letter we're solving for on one side of the equation by itself.